Hello everyone, the morning blessing program is on air this morning of Thursday. And usually on Thursday at Universal Church, we dedicate to families and love life. And family, it's something that we time, you know, these last years, we see this idea of family uh, fading away because many homes, they are not uh, succeeding as, as one. You will see more and more families going through a lot of problems. Families being broken because parents are not taking care of their children, children who are not respecting their parents, couples who are not getting along, people who have started the family and the beginning, everything uh, was looking very good, but with time, things they start becoming very messy and families are being broken for several reasons. Addictions have a very important factor here. Uh, old habits, they have an important factor here. Even the interference of negativity, evil forces, many reasons are making families or uh, couples being destroyed and people are losing hope concerning to what family is, what a happy couple is. Many times I, I've been listening nowadays that this is just a, a fairy tale. This is good for a good movie, a Hollywood movie. It's a night nice story, it's a, a beautiful thing, but in reality, this is not happening or is not possible to happen. And that's why people nowadays, and this idea is, has been growing in people's uh, mind that it's not worth to fight for a family. It's not uh, worth to put so much effort in helping those who did not take care of us or are not there for us or do not love us or they, they, they were never there for us. Several are the reasons that are making people uh, not believing in family anymore, but I would like to talk to you who say, Ricardo, I still love my family. I still want to find a way. I, I don't see how I can change this situation. I don't see a way. Every, to be honest, maybe everyone and everything around you is just, in, uh, is just giving you the idea for you to give up for you to step back and for you to even to break this covenant or this uh, family that you have. But deep inside you, you say, Ricardo, I, I don't want to see my family being destroyed. I don't want to see this coldness growing and destroying my relationship with my family members, with my spouse with my parents, with my kids, with my children. I, I really want, deep inside you, you say, I really want to find a solution for this. Pay close attention to what this couple has to, say, to share with us. You are going to watch the testimony of this couple. And this, it's not a fairy tale. This is a real story of a couple who went through a lot threats, uh, they almost got divorced, uh, he almost killed her, they were always fighting financial problems. Well, better than myself, this couple wants to share their experience, what they suffered and how and what they've done to have the life as it is, their lives as they are at this very moment. Let's watch and I'll be back after. I planned on being the perfect mother. 
with the perfect husband and the perfect home. When I was younger, I promised myself that I'd never be like my parents. No fights, no cheating, no separation. And I promised myself that my kids would never have to go through what I went through. We started well. We were okay at first, but then something happened. I don't know when it began, but our relationship started to get colder and colder. And then the kids came and I couldn't balance work, house duties and kids all at once. My husband and I started fighting more and more and the kids didn't understand why daddy had to move away. In order to compensate, I started giving my kids whatever they wanted to make up for everything. But now they're spoiled and they don't respect me. We've tried everything, spending more time together, therapy, counseling, but nothing seems to work. I can't see a way out of this. I think I've reached at a dead end. What is your story? What is your experience with the word? And what is the difference God has made in your life? Bishop, when I came to Universal Church, I was living in misery. My husband was unemployed for seven years. My husband was frustrated and I was always demanding his part because of the things in the house. There were many needs and I had nothing to give my daughter to eat. Bishop, he used to beat me. My husband beat me up. He dragged me inside of the house by the hair. I would ask him. The fridge was empty. He would go out to get a temporary job and he couldn't find it. And I'd ask him, look how our situation is, we need to get something to eat. And he punched me, he beat me like I was a man. He pulled my hair. He dragged the furniture inside the house, 24-7 living this hell inside of my house. But wait a minute, you didn't talk or answer to him so calmly. No. He didn't hit you for nothing, did he? No, I beat him too, I was doing the same. I beat him too. Because that being the case, he is the only one who was the bad guy, is it, or isn't it? Yes or no, it does not exonerate him. But it didn't justify what she did either. I was going after my husband with a knife in my hand. And he held the knife, so I would kill him. He even has a mark from when I pulled the knife and ripped the skin off his hand. He held that big knife and I've done this movement, then, it cut the skin off from my husband's hand. I even threw a pot of boiling oil on my husband's back. I could see the skin burning and falling off. I was desperate. I was extremely desperate. Jennifer, my daughter was very young. She was starving. So, when he was trying to get something and get some money, I was desperate. I didn't have any direction. I started knocking on my neighbor's doors, on people's doors, asking for food. Neighbors and people put leftover food into bags. I was taking it to my house. Sometimes the cheese was rotten. I separated it from the rest and give it to my daughter to eat. People gave the leftovers of food that had already been in their homes for several days. I rummaged through the bins, and I was also going to the market to find fruit or something that had fallen on the floor. And I took home a lot of food that was rotten and spoiled. Did you not feel humiliated with that situation? Yes, I felt very humiliated and ashamed of my situation. And the only way to stop her demands, was beating her up. These were the thoughts going on in my mind. Beat her up, spank her up. She would stay in one room crying and I would go to another room or leave the house. This is how we were living. How many years living in this hell? There were more than seven years. I looked at my husband and we didn't have a couple relationship. We couldn't sleep together. When I was close to my husband, I just wanted to hit him. I shook him. I demanded of him saying, our daughter is starving. What was your rock bottom? And, how did you get the church? It was when, I threw that pot of boiling oil, on my husband's back. I even said, there's no way to fix this, one will kill the other. We both have marks on our body, because of the violent fights we had. You know Bishop, it was a war. And in one of these fights, he wanted to listen music. We were fighting for a toothpick that fell to the ground. It was a hell. And he turned on the radio, and I didn't want to listen to any song. I was very provocative. 
I said, you won't turn on the radio, I don't want it on, full of anger, I was hungry, and cursing him, because I thought he was obliged, and he should solve all out, as a wife, I also did not fulfill my role of being patient, and he left the house, but the radio was already on, look how amazingly God works, the church radio was tuned in, I was lying on my bed, I just sobbed and cried, and I could hear a pastor talking on that radio, there is a God who can change your life. If you go and take an action on the altar, and I went to the church, the way I was at the moment, I went to church, I was wearing an old pair of slippers on my feet, I was covered in blood and all disheveled. I entered in the church and sat at the first row, and I started listening to the preaching. I didn't look at anyone in the church, just to the pastor. And everything pastor was talking about was coming inside of me with such strength because I wanted to know it better. I wanted to have a life that I never had before. And at that moment, I wanted to have God's attention. I wanted to be seen by God in the midst of a multitude of people. I wanted God to pay attention to me, because I was suffering too much, and I would die. I wasn't able to bear that situation any longer. I was awake all night long praying and talking to a God I haven't known until that moment. And then I said to Adriano, now, you go with me. And my husband was sharpening the knife inside the house. You're done, Thais. You're done. And we said it arguing and pushing me. You're going with me to the church. I held my husband's hand and I dragged him to the altar. I also wanted to save my marriage. Firstly, I wanted to be born of God. I wanted him to be born of God too. And then, we could be happy together. That's why I dragged him to the altar. In my mind, I had an assurance that God had already made all my dreams come true. Firstly, being born of God. This is what I told my husband. I want to know God. I came from the altar with Adriano, but I was already a different woman. He came upsetting me from home to the church, but returned in silence. And when we got home, the house was completely empty. Our situation was exactly the same. But, what was within me, was far greater bishop. My husband came to me and said, Ties, I need to talk to you. Then, he put everything into words, sincerely. He said he loves me. He spoke about absurd things he had done against me that I wasn't aware of. God made him to be cleansed from within. He cried and he knelt asking for forgiveness. Ties, I don't know what happened on that altar. But I'm not the person I was anymore. I don't know why I kept beating you up. He regretted everything he had done to me. And then, what did change in your life? In what way? My life is completely different. All areas are blessed. A complete life? Especially having the Holy Spirit. Do you have the Holy Spirit? Yes, it's the most important bishop. Amen. Could you see what would happen to this couple if this woman did not give a try to herself, to her husband, to the family, where would be this family today? Where, where and how would be the daughter? How would, would they be today if they did not uh, give a try to themselves? Thanks God, this woman one day was sensitive to the voice of faith, and she took the step, the step of faith of fighting for herself, fighting for her husband, for the marriage, for the family, and today, how beautiful, isn't it? Today, the family is transformed. Today, the couple is restored. The marriage is restored. There's love. There's unity. There's prosperity. There's a blessing upon this couple. Proving to me and to you that today you can be happy in your love life. You can be happy with your family. Proving to me and to everyone who is watching us that there's still time for you to save your marriage, to save your family, and everything will depend on you. Just saying how I wish this to happen, Ricardo. How I wish to see this in my life won't be enough. You need to take a step of faith. 
there's a very important message in the Bible that talks about a man called Jairus who had his daughter uh, so sick that she was close to, to die. And she and he, the father, he took a decision of going and finding Jesus to ask for, for help, for, he, for, for Jesus to go and help him with the situation that the daughter was in. Jesus immediately went and on the way, someone came and brought the bad news and said, your daughter is dead. Do not bother the, do not bother the master anymore. And Jesus looked at him and said, do not fear, only believe. Mother, father, you are watching me, pay close attention. Instead of being there in tears, instead of you being there saying there's nothing else that I can do, there's nothing else that can be done for my son, my daughter. Instead of looking to your marriage and say, it's a, a dead end, pastor. There's nothing else that can be done. There's nothing else that can be done with my love life situation. Instead of you saying, I was born to suffer and all the sufferings, disappointments and all the, the, the traumas that I went through in life are the proof of this. I tell you, you are wrong. I'm telling you what Jesus told to this father. Do not fear, only believe. Jesus was aware that his daughter was was dead. Jesus was aware that his, the daughter of this man was, was dead. The sickness took her life away, but he also knew what he wanted to do, what he was ready to do. And in fact, when he got there, he prayed and life came back to this girl and she was alive again. So my dear friend, you may say, my family is broken. My family has no solution. My family is completely, completely divided. I, there's nothing else that can be done. My dear friend, there's, there's something that you can be done, that you can do. You can, you can trust. Jesus told to Jairus, do not fear, only believe. You can believe. You can say today, I will do what I have not done until today. Today, I will manifest my faith in a way that I have not done throughout all the time that I've been fighting for my family. You can say today, I will use this trust in a way that I never did it. And you mother, you can see your children being transformed. You are a father who feels disrespected by the way that your children are treating you. You see and you look to your marriage and you see your, your marriage going down the drain day by day. You see it's going, you are losing it. Something that you fought so much to have it, to get it. You loved your spouse, you, you, you got, when you got married, you, it was a marriage, a marriage of love. You, you know, you, you really want to see the, restora the, the, the restoration of your family, of your marriage, but your spouse, it seems that has a, her mind or his mind in a different place, in a different person. You see that because of the betrayals, because of the coldness, because of the friendships, the habits, the ways, the choices they are making or they are taking, you, you are losing your family, you are losing your, 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 your marriage. You are losing the opportunity of being happy in your love life. Listen to me, do not be afraid, only believe. Today, you can be with us fighting for your love life, fighting for your family. I would like to invite you to prepare a glass of water or a bottle of water to have it close to you because I would like to intercede to say a prayer on your behalf and on behalf of your family, on behalf of your love life. And I will ask God to bless this water to help you. Please prepare it and in a few moments, I'll be here praying on your behalf. Don't be afraid 
of the storms that rock your life, God will protect you. Call on His name, He swore to bless you, and take away your pain and give you joy. Don't be afraid of the pain that breaks your heart, no need to fear. Put your trust in God. He'll dry your tears No dream or problem is too big for Him The sun may no longer shine The moon may give up its light But His promise will remain until the end My God is not When we pray to God, we can receive strength, courage, faith, peace and anything we sincerely ask for. Take advantage of this moment, close your eyes, and raise your thoughts to God. It's time to pray. My dear Lord, seeing the family divided, going through problems, seeing, my Lord, our family members suffering with a problem, sometimes we desire, because of love, we would desire that that pain would come upon us, that that suffering would come upon us. Seeing our family fading away, the love, the respect, the harmony among our family fading away, my Lord brings, my Father, more hurt, more suffering, more pain into this person's heart than going through an incurable disease, going through the worst problem ever in this world. When someone sees the marriage, my Lord, the coldness between the couple growing, you know, the rudeness that sometimes couples are treating each other, the way that they are living inside of the same house, but they live like just two friends or two siblings, or sometimes even worse, as their worst enemies. They are not a couple anymore. They behave towards each other as their worst enemies. And this person prays with me and cries and lives desperate because this person doesn't want things to be like this. There are people with me, my Lord, whose love life is completely destroyed. Life, love life has been upside down. They have been in several relationships. And some of them, my God, they would have a good future, my Lord. They would have a good future, but somehow, my Lord, something came up and destroyed everything. And this person today lost hope on love, in love. Lost hope, my Lord, in being happy in their love life, my dear Lord. I ask for your spirit to take away all these 
my God, despair this person has been living in, to take away all these traumas, the pain that this person feels because of the disappointments they had in life. My Lord, to take away, my Father, whatever is hurting in this person's soul when they see their families being compromised and destroyed and use this water, consecrating it, my Lord, to help this person in quenching the thirst, not the physical thirst, but the thirst of seeing a better life. My Lord, to see their love life, their family being blessed and transformed. My dear friend, drink of this water now and receive in the name of Jesus, the peace, the strength, and the direction that you need to overcome all these problems in Jesus' name. Amen. Very well. So today, Thursday, uh, our next service, 10 a.m. and 3 p.m., just uh, dedicated on behalf of your family. And 7.30 p.m., we have the love therapy, which we are praying for family, but also we are praying for your love life. If you want to be happy with your family in your love life, you are my special guest. Here in our church in Liverpool, 153 Northumberland Street, uh, in front of Liverpool Plaza, very close to the Westfield, uh, Westfield Shopping. If you want to know where our, our universal church is, you can go online, uckg.org.au or you can give us a call to our helpline, the number that is being displayed on your screen. And in all our branches, we have our prayer for family throughout the day. And in some of our branches, we have the love therapy dedicated to family and also to couples, singles, those who are investing or want to succeed in their love life. Also, I would like to talk to you about something very important that will take place in our church this coming Sunday. You know, this last Sunday, we have been given to all those who brought a bottle of water. We added in there, in the water, we added the water of the Mount Sinai that our bishops were there they asked God to consecrate the water. And this is the water that we have been adding into the bottle of waters people they brought this last Sunday. But all these Sundays of March and this coming Sunday will be the first one. We are going to have five important Sundays, five Sundays that you cannot miss. And pay close attention if you are suffering, if you have an impossible case, if you reach the rock bottom, if you say, Pastor, I am and I feel like I am a lost case, please pay close attention because this journey of faith of five Sundays, it's for you. The only thing we want you to do is that you will bring is a bottle of water this coming Sunday, 9.30 a.m. But that way you are, you will start getting prepared. You will prepare yourself for you to be part of this journey of faith. How, you may say, how am I going to get prepared for this journey of faith? You are fighting for your financial life. You want to see yourself being delivered from the problems that you are going through. You are going, uh, you are suffering with an incurable disease. You know, you have been listening many, many things. You have been watching many things. 
You have been feeling many things and the majority of them are not good, are not positive. Am I wrong? I know that I'm not. I know that the majority of things that you are listening, watching, the, the, the majority of things that you are even witnessing, they are not good, they are not positive. And all these things from outside, they tend to contaminate what is inside of us, which I call my faith. And the evil knows that the moment that you are using your faith is the moment that you can get rid of these problems. So what you are going to do from now onwards, my dear friend, when those negative words come saying that uh, there's no solution, that there's nothing that you can do, that it happened with many others, that may, maybe divorce, or maybe you have to accept the situation as it is, that you are going to be with this sickness for the rest of your life, or maybe you will die with this sickness, you will say exactly the opposite. You will say, no, Jesus has died on the cross for me and I'm going to be there this coming Sunday, the first of five of this journey of faith and I will fight in faith because I believe, as I saw in the testimonies, I believe that God will change my life. And in doing this, my dear, doing this, my dear friend, you are preparing yourself. And this coming Sunday, the first of five important Sundays, as, as I said, the journey of faith, you, you will come ready, ready as the couple that you were watching the testimony, the real story that you were uh, watching a few moments ago, this, the same way they had their lives transformed, you will be here ready to see your life also being transformed. So in all our universal churches, we are going to have these five Sundays of the journey of faith for your life to be completely transformed. Bring a bottle of water, get prepared, as I said, starting already using your faith and together, myself, Bishop, the other pastors, we are all going to unite our faith on your behalf, certain that you will get the blessing that you want. If you are coming prepared, we are going to be here prepared. We are going to be ready, I'm sorry. We are going to be ready to see the power of God being manifested also in your life. God bless you all. See you then and there. In the desert, God brought forth water from the rock to sustain the people of Israel. And today he still performs miracles that give life. From that moment, as soon as I drank the water, I came down from the altar, it stopped. I went for my MRI, they couldn't find anything. We use the blessed water every day, no more ulcer, no more cancer, not even a scar. Every morning, seven days, I was using this water. No pain came back, nothing in my stomach. Come to receive your drop of miracles. From water blessed at the foot of Mount Sinai. This Sunday at 9.30 a.m. At 153 Northumberland Street, Liverpool. Or at your nearest Universal Church. 